Joining me soon will be award-winning writer-director Nia Contney, and I have with me accomplished actors Walter Graham and Kevin Florette, and they're here today to talk about the award-winning film, Nine Awards, Small Time. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited to talk to you both, and I'll start with you, Kevin. What attracted you to the role? I loved how different it was for me, and uh, so that's always fun to dive into. Uh, and uh, Niav, Niav is just, she had such an incredible story that I thought I, I needed to be a part of this. And, and I lucked out. Originally, I was only scheduled to do one day on the shoot of part two of the film. And she, she called me up a few months after we shot and asked if I would be interested in being in part three. And I jumped to the chance because it's such a fantastic character. Yeah, so you play the dad. And I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if we were saying that out loud uh, for people or not. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, yeah, he's a troubled soul. He's, he's a war veteran and uh, dealing with PTSD and opioid addiction. And uh, he's thrust upon his uh, young daughter who he really hasn't met before and uh, trying to deal with that uh, along with everything else that he's dealing with. How did you prepare for this role? Like, was it challenging? Absolutely. Uh, I, I have two friends who got over an opioid addiction. So mm -hmm. I talked with them at length about uh, mindset and physicality and, uh, and uh, I give them huge props for me, being able to get to the other side of that because it's, it's a terrible thing to, be dealing with or going through. And so I did, I talked to them at length and that really helped to find Lonnie for me. Mm -hmm. And what was that like working with Emma? Cause there's a, you know, the father daughter relationship. Yes. I, I just, Audrey is such a joy to work with on set and offset. Uh, and she's such a professional. It really, she kind of set the tone cause she had already been doing, she did part one and I came in and she just did her job, but did it beautifully and always with a smile on her face. And yeah. so it really just helped ease me into and, and having Holter there as well. And mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was a great day on set. Yes, and Holter, what attracted you to the role? Uh, it's it's a sort of a, I'll make it a, as less circuitous as possible. Uh, Neov directed me in an Edgar Allan Poe play in college. Um, and, uh, if you, if you saw it, you'd be like, right, this is Neo. She, she already had the style that she has. Um, and we had sort of lost touch, but when she was writing Rick, she sort of remembered me, which is, I actually take as a compliment, even if you watch the film, um, just aspects of, of Rick and, and also just, she remembered my acting as well as she remembered me. And so I think she was like, I, there's a visual I could see and I think Holter could probably do this so she didn't really have my info and reached out kind of a friend of a friend of a thing and uh and I went to audition after very briefly looking at part one and it it, it was the the bad guy but a, mm -hmm. a good bad guy makes you like him or her you know like if, if you if you can't humanize a bad guy don't have one or just go all the way in the other direction, you know, when Charles Durning, not Charles Durning, when Charles, somebody played death in um, the last action hero, like just be bad, campy and cartoony. And that's not what she had at all. I mean, Rick has issues with everybody else, including life in America, but you, you can like him in the moments, sort of in between the horrible things. You're like, oh yeah, I, I could hang out with that guy. He seems cool. And so that, that sort of juxtaposition is always fascinating to act, um, you know, to have things that are layered. Um, and there was the possibility that I could ride a Harley on camera. So, I mean, I jumped the chance and we just met, we met at like a chicken place in the city. And she basically was like, when he walked in the door, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Now we're, now we can just talk and catch up because it's, he can play Rick. So. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about the, the scene with the motorcycle. Cause you have experience, right? Yeah, I've been riding 
since for probably 15 or so years. I, uh, I stopped recently because of other health concerns. Uh, my wife, I think very logically said, how about I just worry about one thing killing you? Um, and in the face of that logic, I was like, yeah, right. so I'm not riding as much anymore. I think actually that those bike scenes might've been the last, the last riding I've done, but I've, you know, tens of thousands of miles under my belt and I'm a mechanic. So I was in, incredibly comfortable on the bike and I needed to be because Audrey and I, she'd never been on a bike and we had all these scenes. Um, and day one, I, I pr I'm pretty sure it was either day one or day two where our real introduction as human beings, much less as characters took place on that bike on the road, hauling ass. Um, and she just, she's like, like Kevin said, it's hilarious that she's such a pro because this was her first job ever. Wow. Um, and you know, so it's like, oh, wow, you're so professional about this. How long have you been doing this? <laughs> 20 minutes, you know? Um, and she, she, just, cause it's a huge role. She carries the movie and, and the world around her is murky and lame, you know, mm -hmm. and, and she has to bring that sunshine all the time. And I'm sure that was exhausting. Um, but she just did a great job. And, and the way she handled the motorcycle stuff, she climbed on, she figured me out, probably cast somebody who knew what they were doing. And she just gripped me like, you know, her life might end at any moment at the beginning of working the scenes and just driving around. And then within 10, 15 minutes, she was chill. She was like, I, I trust this guy. I, he seems to know what he's doing. He's, he does know his lines too, you know? Um, and then we just had a blast and it was beautiful. Just, you know, just pouring it around places. Sometimes Nia would have these big, big, long, wide shots. And she'd just be like, all right, we'll go down there and just haul all the way there and then turn around and come back and maybe we'll do it again. So yeah, yeah it was, it was glorious. It was fantastic. Okay. <laughs> so how are you? Hi. Thank hey, you for I, meeting with us. You know, thank you. I wanted to um, ask you, what was the inspiration behind the film? Uh, so the inspiration behind the film was a memory of mine growing up mm -hmm. as a kid. And uh, it goes, it's not faithful to the memory. So <laughs> I've <laughs> embellished uh, largely. But it was uh, just the, uh, the feeling of this child being in a, in a very dark mm -hmm. situation, potentially, but having a great time um, and going on a really fun ride and <laughs> seeing kind of cool stuff and enjoying it and then realizing uh, through the adults kind of reactions that there was something wrong with that and that there was something other going on but not really understanding it all um so that's kind of the starting point from it of telling the story of emma uh who is having her own experience a childhood kind of innocent experience of all of these situations which we as the viewer then can also kind of see that oh they're rather different situations than how she's necessarily experiencing them. <laughs> yes, I mean, despite the, you know, poverty, addiction, and, and she has hope, like she looked, we're seeing it through her lens, I would think, you know, I felt, and I felt the emotion, I, and yet everything is going around, like making the cookies, she's baking cookies, she comes out and she could, you know, it's, it's, um, it just evokes emotion. And, and, it, and it represents to me hope, there's hope there. Is that what you want viewers to take away from the film? Because that's what I felt. Um, you know, I think for most of the film, I was going for I was trying to make sure that the contradictions in mm -hmm. all of these situations were present. Um, but then at the end, because it wasn't written out the entire script, so it's not like we knew where we were ending this thing. Um, at the end, I realized we needed some hope for this girl. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't know how to get it because we had gotten into kind of a dark place. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so that was kind of the challenge for me in writing part three was to find a way to end it in a hopeful place for her without betraying the, uh, the nature of the rest of the film and not adding on some happy ending that could not exist in this film. It would feel wrong. Uh, but finding kind of a hopeful way that, and maybe it's just hoping in her, you know, mind for a moment, or maybe she'll do something with it and uh, do great things. Who knows what will happen? But it's a, a moment of hope for sure. And I wanted the hope to come from her mm. and maybe extend to the adults rather than any hope coming from the adults because they kind of burnt their their bridges in giving her any hope right <laughs> they weren't about to like turn around and suddenly offer her assistance but uh she's the one actually i think who offers assistance to lani at the end in kind of making him bringing him out of his very, yes. very kind of tight mindscape, uh, if only for a moment, but I, th I think maybe for a little bit longer, I hope, Ronnie, Kevin. <laughs> no, I, I do, I agree. I think that's, that is what slowly pulls him out of it. And uh, cause he's so reticent to be dealing with her at the beginning and, but, her her just kindness and always being there and being present even but her optimism i think ekes a little bit out and and touches lonnie in, in a way that he might see a better future and when he says i love you like she says i love you and it's just um they become like he becomes the you know a, a better person he wants to improve and and you see that and it's through through Emma's hope and optimism and and you know it's just a it's a drama um but is it humorous too like in parts like I mean with the cookies I I felt it was so endearing she was there was cookies <laughs> and beer you know and I'm like here here she is you know despite what's going on she's there <laughs> Absolutely. No, I do. I think that that is such a beautiful moment of levity, especially with the chaos that is going around with the group. And then she comes in and her buoyancy just changes the room. Mm -hmm. And and she does. She changes all of us in, in a way throughout the film. And, and I love how, for me, the humor in that scene comes from her sort of innocence and joy mm -hmm. at presenting her baking and um you know rick is kind of observing this from the sides but then lonnie is totally totally serious and like <laughs> has no access to humor or like embracing the situation at all he's just kind of stuck closed and, off yes <laughs> yeah for me that's like what what makes it so funny <laughs> yes you know, um, was there like a favorite scene um, that was in that you really like at the motorcycle scene, or was there anything? Those were those were all amazing for for sort of you know not necessarily small time reasons, just because it's cool to be on a bike and it's and it was great to act and ride. I mean that you know you don't get a chance to do that a lot. Um, and and but I mean I. It's hard to pick them out because as, as Kevin said, and, and as Niav alluded to, you know, we shot three separate pieces of the film um, over a long period of time. So, you know, there's glorious, glorious sunshine and then just freezing cold and then kind of back to okay weather again. And so it all, it's, it's sort of a very blended set of memories and nothing, nothing stands out as like an astonishingly great scene to be in because they were all really good and almost universally challenging. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of what, when, when Kevin has his last sort of scene with, with Emma and, um, and there's, there is sort of an up 
and it is her imposition of goodness on people who are running pretty low in the goodness tank. And like, there's so many kids out there who have to save their parents, who have to be what brings their parents or their family or whoever out of it. And she does it. And, you know, I, I don't want to be the cynic and think about 15 years from now when she's in there. And, and childish joy and, and child love is like one of the most powerful things out there. And she just like sprinkles it like fairy dust on all of us. And so, you know, like to me, the, the sort of dark, weird scene in the bathroom with the scar is cool because it was a great scene to shoot. Emma was a rock star in it and just played it so straight. And we had sort of concocted this scene to be like, let's walk toward creepy, but not be creepy and just let the, let the audience figure it out. So that was that was like very collaborative with Nihav and, and, and Audrey and me. And so that was really wonderful, but, but I mean, they're just all great and, and they're cut great. Cause if you just laid the, these three up and ran them, it would be a completely different movie. And Nihav saw it from afar after shooting the third one and then, and then really built it, really constructed this thing and, and made it as powerful as it is. Yeah, because I, I feel there's such a great connection with everyone on set, um, you know, and it just, it just, you know, you, with, with the lines, did you have, um, like, did you stick to the script or did you have, like, the flexibility to add to it or how, how did that work? The well, let's see what Nina thinks. <laughs> uh, what were you going to say, Kevin? <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know how Niav did it, but it, there was so much within so little, mm -hmm. so much was said and not said. And so I, we didn't add anything, we didn't need to because what she wrote was brilliant. And it was what happened in between and our reactions with each other that I think fleshed out what Niav hopefully was going for. And it was really just a testament to her brilliance as a writer. Oh. I distinctly remember, I distinctly remember saying everything that was written in all three scripts at some point in shooting. And I also distinctly remember saying lots of other stuff, not, <laughs> no, not like going off on my own, but we'll shoot something and we'll get it done. And then Neil would be like, well, how about this? Let's try that. Let's do that one more time. You know, and it wasn't just directing of acting, which, which she does and does well. And I think the, the greatest gift uh, and compliment to a director is that they let the actors do their damn job because that's why they're there. Um, so there was no like being led by the nose, but there was talking talking about scenes and where it should go and where it should end and, and beats and all that stuff. But there was openness to be like, all right, yeah, that's good, we got it, but how about... And so we would do a little bit of that too. And uh, and that that's always freeing and, and really feels collaborative because it's like, you just created something. Uh, but yeah, so prop, props, props to the director for letting it go both ways. But yeah, I think it was mainly, ma almost entirely everything written, but as the way it's written does allow for a lot to be spoken between the lines because it's, not, it's kind of underwritten a bit. So that's maybe where more of the improvisation came is what is being spoken between the lines uh, rather than changing the actual lines that are spoken. The damn cat was never off book. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like, right, the cat improvised, the kitten improvised that little line when yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's so brilliant. Talking, and it's yeah. like the most brilliant line. <laughs> The cat was great. <laughs> yeah, so nine awards, is that correct? Like it's a, you've got the St. Louis International Film Festival, for example. Uh, yeah. That's wonderful. So, yeah. So what's the feedback been like so far? Really, uh, really great. Uh, yeah. Really, really positive, lovely feedback. And I think people are relating to, um, People have really understood kind of the point of view, this childhood point of view thing that uh, kind of keeps it going and, and the humor in it, which is linked to that point of view too, I think. And um, 
and the hope in it. Um, so, you know, as long as, as long as they're relating to those things, um, I think there's a lot to be had from this film. And, and kind of this portrait of also, a lot of people have said, you know, they are understanding that it's a portrait of America as well as uh, these characters. And that makes me really happy that, you know, they're receiving that because it's, it's an important part of it for me. <laughs> Is, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up, <laughs> Walter? Yeah, um, I mean, uh, for, for my own medical reasons, I wasn't doing a lot of on-camera acting. Uh, and this is kind of what got me back into it because it's, it's harder to get cast when you look like you've been dead for three weeks. Um, and to jump right back into something as challenging and layered as this and to, fe to feel supported by the director and, and I mean, it was an indie, you know, our budget was like, you know, dental floss and, and maybe a bag of chips <laughs> and that you work on a movie like that, you do it cause you love it. Um, so everyone there loved it and everyone there was working their tails off. And so just to, to, to have kind of a welcome back when there was a period when I might, I thought maybe I wouldn't be acting or breathing. It was really, really astonishing to look at something and, and unarrogantly be like, I'm so proud to have been in this and of the work I managed to drag out of me. Like, it's just, it's a, it's a gift. And, and I think this whole film speaks to a lot of what's going on in America and uh, bringing up lots of different issues. And I, I think it's very timely and definitely worth watching, especially right now. Yeah, I would just say that, uh, you know, I'm so thankful for everyone who joined this project, that they joined it so fully. Um, you know, and as you can tell, I think from the acting of uh, these two fine fellows, um, <laughs> you know, no one was kind of just coming and doing the job. Um, you know, everyone was giving entirely of like their own psyche, whatever they had going on and what they could lend of themselves that might not be pretty to the roles or physically as well, like just offering themselves. Congratulations. I really enjoyed our interview today. And, you know, again, thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you.